You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is the sales energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets success- successfully successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Boom! That's exactly it. Do that. Let's do that. Yeah. My man! <laughs> what a day. You're, I, can't, I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, geez. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. Continue on. <laughs> oh, now it. you can. Now I can okay. hear you. All right. So every time I see that intro, I think to myself, you know, I can add this and I can add this and I can add this because, you know, there's a little difference between that. Actually, there's a there's more than a, a few differences between that and the podcast intro, That's the right. audio podcast That's intro, because right. a lot of people confuse the live show with a podcast. Yeah, a lot Which of is people, okay. all over the world, people are confusing that. They can't sleep at night thinking, man, I need to really master uh, talking to the DJ and all his different uh, venues here. Well, it's a different thing, right? Going live is different than a podcast. There are different audiences. There's different experiences, but they're all part of virtual selling. And, man, we're, we've been doing this for a year. Yes, I know. We've been and- doing this go live thing for a year, right? And well, you know, there's there's a reason why, and the reason why has a lot to do with our our next guest here. So I, I'm going to introduce him because, and I want to do it like this before I want to tell you my favorite Jeffrey Gittimer story, oh, and awesome. uh, okay. it's a personal story, and I want to tell it here because I don't want to embarrass him when he comes on uh, in person. And uh, so he, he puts on this big persona. Big tough guy, angry, you know, sell or die, in your face type of thing. The guy is a marshmallow. So uh, we were doing some, uh, uh, attempting to do some business. Something was going on and uh, my dad died. And uh, my dad died and we were going up to the funeral in New Jersey and, you know, from Atlanta going to New Jersey. And uh, he got wind of it. And, you know, from Atlanta to New Jersey, you go through Charlotte. And so... He probably doesn't even remember this, but this is just the type of guy he is and the type of living the sales life that that he would live, which is uh, give value first and uh, to uh, do something nice every day for someone without anybody knowing it and stuff like that. And on the way to Charlotte, he said, I want you to stop here. We'll go out to lunch. We'll go out to dinner or something like that. Well, we never actually did that, but he took care of. Uh, myself, my wife, and my two young children at the time put us up in hotels uh, uh, to eat at the restaurant, to do the whole thing, and just not worry about anything and just take care of us. And then, I don't, you know, I, I, I must have said thank you, but he's never brought it up since. It's just not. It was just like something you do as part of being a human. And with that, let me introduce you to you know my. My mentor, the best salesperson I've ever met, and one of the best humans, Mr. Jeffrey Gittimer. Well, Jeffrey, my... welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, you got to put your arms in the air. You yeah, got to yeah. put your arms in the air. Okay. There you it. Go. Okay. Um, see, I'm wearing Pink Floyd today as a oh, nice. former oh. <laughs> rocker. That, if anyone has ever watched the Andy Griffith show, if you're from the South, of course. Yeah. You know, the uh, the rule is don't mess with Andy. And uh, Floyd the Barber was the iconic deadpan humorist who, at the time, they switched from black and white to color, mm-hmm. had a stroke. And so he was never the same. <laughs> and when they started to get popular, they would go to these autograph shows but Floyd, Howard McNair is what his name was, could never sign anything. 
So all the other cast members, their autographs are worth somewhere between 50 and 150 bucks. Floyd, a thousand. And you can't find them. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why couldn't he sign? Because he had a stroke. <clears throat> oh, he had a stroke. I don't think it was just that. <clears throat> Hello. All right. There you go. You've got to pay attention. So what's going on? <laughs> Jeffrey Gittimer? So what's going on with you guys? How are you guys doing? What's going on in COVID world? Well, let me tell you what's, uh, we're, I'm ignoring the whole thing. That's a sort of personal yeah. thing. I just ignore. I don't care. But um, what it's done in this world is created something uh, special. If you don't know, uh, uh, Chris Stone, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer has been around from the beginning. All the little marketing things Hi. that everybody does, he started it. Okay, and so you know the expression, I'm older than dirt? Yes. With me, it's actually accurate. <laughs> That's right. So the, the first, tell the story about how you first got into this whole sales training thing with fax machines. Well, um, I sold in New York City. I don't know if you know about selling in New York City, but um, you make a cold call and fuck you as a greeting. And, huh. and everybody wants a bribe. But I got pretty good at it. I was making million dollar sales in New York City. And I started to do consulting and selling because people just weren't as good as me. And then I started to write about selling in the Charlotte Business Journal and people went nutso. Well, one day I put uh, at the bottom of, the, of my article, I said, I did a thing on Ty Boyd. It was like a dad to me here. And said, hey, I did two seminars. I, I went to a seminar and I wrote two columns about him. And I said, if you want Ty Boy's 51 ways to get closer to your customer, just fax me the words Ty Boyd on your letterhead and I'll fax you back his 51 ways to get closer to your customer. We got 300 faxes the first day. I literally broke the fax machine at the business journal. They made me then do it to my home or my home office. So I got three fax machines. I put a, a fax back in there every single day. And this is in 1992, back before anything was anything. And um, we were doing hundreds of faxes every day. And that told me that my customers would read what I wrote down to the last sentence and then take action. That was a huge aha in terms of what was the value of what I was writing to them and could they relate to it? So I knew after I put a hundred of those columns in the paper, I'd have a book and I had the sales Bible and then da 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 da, -da. But you, it's with intention. It, there was nothing that was like, I mean, was it accidental? I don't know. You know, I, the whole thing was accidental, but there's no accidents. So you if you were, happened. If you were to describe yourself, because I, I described you as a salesman, but if you were just going to meet somebody, what, what would you call yourself? Um, it depends on the circumstance. If I was meeting like the Queen of England, I'd probably be a bit more formal. But if I was meeting like a regular guy, I would say, listen, you don't know me. I, I wrote the Little Red Book of Selling. It's the best selling sales book of all time. It's, it's and, He's an author. Right. Um, actually, Dan, I prefer yes. to call myself a writer. Ah. Because authors don't always write their own books. They have mm -hmm. ghostwriters. I'm not a ghostwriter. I'm a, a regular guy from Jersey. That, that's awesome. And how many books have you written? 17. So, I know. Uh, the latest I mean, of which is here. <laughs> the latest of which is right here. It's called Go Live. And it's all about what, oh, wow, well, where do you go? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's all about what you have to do in today's world in order to um, be relevant. Because if you're not live, as you know, look at where you are right now. If you're not live, you're not relevant. But it's, it, it, it's all kinds of ways that you can appear. And what we do with our live show, and I don't know whether you do it with yours, but we have a, a VA team in the Philippines, and they take my content out of every go live and repurpose it. So you'll see a Twitter link or a Facebook link or a LinkedIn link that leads to some of the content from the show. Because I, my, my go live, I've been going live every day since March the 16th, which is when the pandemic hit. 
So I'm now at day like 320 or something like that. And go Google it. That's but. awesome. So you take that live and not only do you, you have the video of it, so you take certain content from it and that turns into into columns or into tweets yeah. or into blogs. It's called, it's called repurposing. I mean, there's literally a name for it. But yes. if you go to, if you use our, uh, I'll get with Jen and she'll introduce you to our VA company. They're not expensive. And, um, and they show up for work every day. And, um, <laughs> and they know exactly what to do. I, I, well, it's, it's a team of 60 people in the Philippines. Yeah, they're great. You see, the, the world is so small now that you can do Everybody's so comfortable yeah. doing this stuff over over time. So how you so you've done you've done it everything. You've started, you know, with the fax machine. And of course, you had your emails and you started with your newsletter. Uh, mm -hmm. Your newsletter uh, used to go out uh, in the mail and then it yeah. was an email. Yeah. And so you've had some email. Now, yesterday, yesterday was the 1000th issue of that newsletter. A thousand. Yeah. So, so, I mean, think about it. So it's, there's 52 weeks in a year. It's, it's going to push in 20 years um, of every Friday, never missing, never miss an issue. So for, and, and it goes out once a week. Yeah. Every Tuesday. Um, they, so the, you, other, that's the other thing, Dan, it's not just a matter of going out every week. It's being consistent. Same day, same time. So when I go on my Facebook, um, my Facebook Live, which is done through StreamYard as well, it is 9.59 every day, every day. And people literally call it the 9.59. So wait, that's on your, so is it a Facebook group that you're doing or do you have a membership no, site it's, or, or you? No, I just go out live for free every day. And for how long is this? 30 minutes. So 30 minute. And oh, so they, this is good. So now where do you get people need to, to know this? Cause I already think you just come up with this content all the time. Where do you get this content or do you start it with a question or do you wake up with a pimple on your face? And my parents were smart. That automatically made me smart. Then I get to figure out what I want to do with my brains. Well, because I've been, if, I've been, I have a thousand things that I've written, a thousand columns that I've written, 17 books that I've written. I have content. Yes. I don't, you know, I, I don't have to worry about what am I going to talk about today? Um, I'll think of something sometimes when I'm clicking the go live button. I don't, yeah. sometimes I prepare, sometimes I don't. It depends. That's um, it. That's exactly right. And because that's right. Today I talked about humor. Yesterday, I talked about what are the five things you got to do to go live. You know, what? look at my background. Don't I look intelligent? Come on. Yeah, you, that's right. Library. You got books. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah can, so Stone looks intelligent. I look like an empty uh, shelf. That's what I look like. But you have to look at it from the standpoint of, are you? is it just for that? You're trying to create an image for somebody, and I want to create a relaxed image. Yeah. So I use a... $50 microphone that's better than my, my Apple mic, you know, in my, in my Mac mm -hmm. and it gives a better sound. So I want to project myself the best way I possibly can. I also have very high speed internet. So there's stability to that. The once I have that and I know that I don't want to, I don't want to look down at my laptop like a lot of people do. Right. I want to, you know, be eye to eye with, with my customer. So I'm, I'm eye to eye contact. I have one of these desks that has my laptop on it and I can raise it up to the height that I want. There's so many simple things that people don't understand about going live. It's not just, you don't hit a button. Well, schmucks hit a button, but be real people. Like you, you go to a meeting, a corporate meeting. I see people with their fucking unmade bed behind them. Yeah. Like, and the fan going and the fan right. going. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are they thinking? So I, uh, yeah. I put myself in, in a position where I'm perceived as at least acceptable. And from there, it, then content rules. So I'll I'm, tell I'm you, I'm glad the you, um, 
Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Well, yeah, let me just say, I'll tell you the fear of the reason why people don't go live. And by the way, if you're watching this ever, pick up the book. It's the best book you'll ever get. I mean, it's just, it's it's a step-by-step -step guide on what to do, what to say, how to find the content. Yep. It's unbelievable. Look at that, Chris. See my Chris Dome, my producer? Look at him putting that Chris, uh, book. He's, right he's rolling. I mean, I tell it's you. It's so easy to read. There's lots of big type pages. Yes, it is. It's it, it, And it's a great book. But here, so... I started reading it. Uh, Jeffrey Gittimer, nice enough to send me a copy. By the way, again, remember I talked about giving value first for everybody? So I said, hey, uh, Jeffrey, will you come on the show? First thing he said is, sure, I'm going to send you two signed books. One's for you and one's to give away. What do you do? What do you guys do when you get a, you know, a possible lead, a way to get in front of other people? What do you do? What, how do you make the first effort? So he just does that effortlessly. So I read the first couple of chapters and I said, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going live. And so I did on a different show, just by myself without Chris Stone. I just like a schmuck. I just pressed go and I went there. So this is the fear of everybody else why they won't go live. What if nobody shows? Uh, my first live, there was nine people on, and two of them were my daughters and my wife. Um, so I, you have to, you build your audience slowly over time. You can't so be disappointed that you didn't get the audience that you were looking for. People will tell other people. If you have an email list, email it. If you if you go on Facebook, tell your friends. Tell both your friends, and and you know put yourself in a, in a, put yourself in a position where the content is worth going live for. Exactly right. Yeah, I, so you know, Jeffrey, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought up backing up when you're talking about just the little things that you mm -hmm. did to make yourself presentable. And I think a lot of people still don't get it, but they don't understand. There's just a couple of things. You just got to have some light. You don't need a $400 Shure SM7B microphone. You can, you know, Jeffrey Gittimer has a $50 microphone. This microphone. It's a Comica, if you want the brand name. You buy them on Amazon for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but, so, yeah, Chris, let me, throw something, let me throw something at you. I'm doing a seminar tomorrow for coaches in England. And I was told by the, the their CEO that British people are reluctant to go live because of the way they look. So one of my slides tomorrow is going to say that people – on live events, prefer people that are ugly to look at. So you're in great shape. If you don't think you can go because you're ugly, you're actually going to win. And you just I thought I thought you were telling me I was in great shape because I was ugly. I was like, wow, Jeffrey, we just yeah, met, you're, sir. You're in great shape. <laughs> no, I think, and, may, and maybe you could speak to this, Jeffrey. Do you think when you go live, as opposed to, I'm sure you've done a gazillion recorded videos mm -hmm. or recorded, obviously you've done thousands of podcasts. Yep. So when you go live, I think people, like they look at you a little bit more approachable. If you make a mistake, if you happen to have, you yeah. know, a little disheveled, if you, if you, you haven't shaved, if you, um, you know, like people are okay with that when you're alive, they look past it and they can really kind of feel like you're a little bit closer level wise. And then they you know, maybe they're more 76. apt to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, well, that works. I just, but I have the Pete Townsend look, you know, I go for the three day and then I'll shave a little bit and then, you know, but, <laughs> but, but I think that, that if you're reluctant because of the way you look or whatever, then you have no confidence in your content. I have confidence in my content. I don't, you know, I'm fine with whatever. I'm wearing a fucking Pink Floyd t-shirt for God's sakes. Yes. And, and he's not afraid to call people out in the in the audience, too. One of the greatest things and I steal this, by the way, I use it a little differently. But uh, when he has books and stuff to hand out at the at seminars, he uh, he'll say things. I give books to women and bald men. <laughs> you know? Right. right. And, and then when he gives them to a ball, he looks at a guy and he goes, now you are exceptionally bald. <laughs> you know? I do it with prematurely graying hair, men. That's my line. And that's okay. I try yeah. my best to make people feel comfortable through laughter. And I don't make fun of somebody unless I have effaced myself first. 
Like if I was fat, I could make fun of fat people, but I'm not fat. So I'm not going to make fun of fat people. But I will ask the audience, how many of you have 10 pounds extra on you that you wish you didn't have? And yeah. everyone raises their hand. And I go, you know, we're, we are so overweight as a nation. If we were invaded by enemies, we couldn't run away. <laughs> and they get it. They totally get it. I've just called them fat without having to say fat. That's ex that's exactly right. So humor is a big a, a big part of your of your repertoire. Huge, yeah. It, it, it's 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 the whole thing. It's how you get your attention. And if you're smart, the basis of humor is intelligence. It's the last. If you learn a foreign language, the last thing you learn is how to make a joke, or how to be that's funny true. in that language. So it tells you that our language has the same exact thing with it. So, but you have to be looking for it. So I teach lead with humor, start funny, think funny first. Whatever, whatever's happening to you, you can't be pissed off about it. It has to be, it has to be funny. Okay. So just think about it this way. I'm flying into Myrtle beach, South Carolina, and the plane is three hours late and it's raining. Now I have two choices here. I could get out of the plane and be pissed off, or I could get out of the plane and be funny. So these, this is my choice. I get out of the plane. They didn't have one of those ramps. And the first thing that happens is when it gets raining is my hair gets all ruined. <laughs> and then I'll point at a bald guy and go, you know what I mean? And everyone's <laughs> laughing because they know the guy. But That's I haven't insulted him. I've just told him the truth. Yes. Yeah, it's it, but but you you're doing it again in a self-effacing way. Yes, you're mocking yourself out first. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing: is that because I have certain lines like that too? You know, I'll be in an elevator and it's completely silent, and you know nobody's saying anything, and it's just tension in there. So I say, you know, there's no place quieter than a crowded elevator. Yeah. And I'll put look at and whoever whoever like lips go up slightly. That's my target. And then we have something yeah. to talk about and then everybody starts talking. Um, but do you go in there planned with that or just, you know, a lot of times I just have, you have years of stored up just stuff like, ah, oh, that's funny. I, I'll use yeah. it there. Yeah, <laughs> it, it happens. It, sometimes someone will say something from the audience. Sometimes I'm just in the groove of that thing. Sometimes it relates to the company that I'm talking to. It depends. It totally yes. depends. And so do, I've, even, right. I've even taught it to my daughter. My the young my youngest daughter is, is eleven, even though I it's all yeah. other story. Um, we're walking down. We we have a, a condo in a place called Wild Dunes, South Carolina. It's a, a wonderful private community, and there's kind of nobody around, but on the beach. But we're right on the beach. Okay, so me and Gabrielle and my wife Jennifer are walking down to the beach, and Jennifer' wife says. It smells like a fish store here. And Gabrielle goes, Jen, this is where the fish live before they get to the store. <laughs> and we're howling. But I've taught her to think funny first. Very good. And that way, she's looking for it. She's Now, sometimes she's a little cynical, but you know, she's a kid. She'll learn how to, how to grab control of that way earlier than I did. I mean, I just, I didn't understand humor until I started to uh, maybe the eighth grade or ninth grade. And I realized like, wow, this is like the coolest thing on the planet. I got to study more of it. Yeah. So, so Jeffrey, I, how do you, uh, how do you uh, weave in humor from a virtual standpoint, going live, doing what you do virtually? Obviously you're not going to be able to tell somebody they're bald when you can't see them. And so and sometimes, uh, yeah, you, well, <laughs> um, I'm at my, we, we have a high school reunion now every three weeks on Zoom. Wow. And because we tried to do one person to person, but COVID prevented it. And, and keep in mind, I graduated high school in 1963, which makes me older. older than, yeah, yeah. At our 45th high school reunion, they asked me to give a talk. And I said, you know, we've been hanging out with each other all weekend. And but there was only 200 kids in my class. And they're all smart. They all went to college. Haddonfield High School, Haddonfield Memorial High School, just brilliant town. 
I said, you know, I've been listening to all you guys. You've been telling each other how you haven't changed. You look so good. I said, let me be the first one to tell you. You all pretty much look like shit. And <laughs> I'm telling you, it was hysterical. It was absolutely hysterical. Um, but you have to have that, that feeling. If you're virtual, you do it with your slides or you do it with some other visual thing that allows you to show um, that, that your sense of humor is there. You have to have that and you have to start with that or it just doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. let me ask you that with with seminars that you're doing right now or webinars that you're doing right now, when you're showing slides, are you on the side of it or is it just all slide? Just no, I use uh, Zoom. And when you share your screen on Zoom, it shows the little icon of you presenting. OK, so you still have that present of you there, which is yeah. which is which is it's important. Slower. It's like this. It's like the setup you have right now. Right. So the you know, challenge is jokes, because I, I, I encourage this without the face on the side. The jokes will fall flat. Well, I don't tell jokes. I tell stories. And sometimes that helps. Mm. Um, yeah, the story helps without being visual, I think. But if if you can't see the audience, because if it's, it's just slides and it's just you, yeah, it's a, it's, it's harder. But you practice. It's like anything else. That's right. And you get there. Because I've gotten to the point where I said, all right, guys, if you thought that was funny, click that little hand or something so I could see that you're at least laughing. Right. But you don't. I think asking for that is not the right thing to do. If you don't think it's funny, then it ain't funny. And if, if I don't know, just yeah. relax about it. You're you're fine. You don't need audience approval. You, you need audience acceptance. You see, now that's, that's big news right there. Yeah, because that is a challenge. A lot of speakers go out and a lot of trainers go out and you're, you're looking for that uh, approval. Yes, you're good. Danny, you're a good boy. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you've gotten past that. Well, I know my content's good. And let's say there's 100 people in the room uh, and 10 or 20 will be affected forever. I just don't know which 10 or 20. So I give my message to everybody. And, and some mm -hmm. people come into a conference and they're pissed off uh -huh. and they're pissed off the whole time I'm talking and they're going to leave pissed off. I can't help those people. Right. I can't so, help. All, and I spoke with that. I listen early yeah. on. Yes. There are presenters in the national speakers association that are very, they're world renowned speakers. And I can't mention this guy's name, but I'm going to tell you that one of the top people on the planet, I confronted him and I said, listen, I have a problem. I said, I do a live talk and I'm going to piss off a few people. And he goes, well, how many? I said, three or four. He said, how many people in the audience? I said, 500. He said, do you want my personal opinion of what you're supposed to do? I go, yeah, that's why I asked you. He goes, fuck them. <laughs> like you can't. You're just not going to please everybody. Right. There goes three or four of our viewers just there, oh, right? Exactly. Just after saying it, right? I, I don't, if you can't take the language, you don't need, you can't be in sales. If, if you, if you ever go to, if you ever venture into New York city, you're toast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's part of the vernacular. So how have you, you know, you talked about New York, by the way, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them up there. We'll put your name on the screen. You can talk to the, to the yeah. big guy, but you know, New York, it used to be the days that uh, you used to go to the top of the building and you work your way down and you prospect yep. and you stay in the building all day. Uh, things have changed. Audiences oh, yeah. have changed too. And oh, yeah. uh, sensibilities have changed. How have you adjusted yourself and your, pre in your presentation to them, if at all? Well, let's go through the process of how do you gain them as a potential prospect first. And the key is because you can't go cold calling anymore. So you have you have to use the word attraction. Mm. Can I attract the right people to me? And it's not the law of attraction. It's value attraction. So I'm going to post stuff up. You know, people brag about how many LinkedIn connections they have. I have twenty nine thousand 900 LinkedIn connections. I'm maxed out. And another 30 something thousand that follow me. Did I ask them? No. They saw my value and they wanted to connect. That's the key. So value attraction 
is the word that salespeople have to use, not trolling for a lead. That's critical. Mm. Now, when you're in the when you're giving it uh, an audience um, performance, you have no choice. You have to be humorous. That's how you keep the attraction going. And I'll use 250 slides in an hour presentation. I want to keep them riveted to my screen. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and you have a uh, you have a system. It's like story, point, joke. Yeah, it's or- not a it's not a system. It just it comes natural. If you try a system, it's not gonna you're gonna try too hard. Just use what <clears throat> what feels comfortable and what fits. Got it. Yeah. And I like, I like how, you know, you're, you're talking about, you know, utilizing humor. We're talking about zoom. We're talking about all the ways that you're doing this and going live, but uh, every step of the way you're mentioning and you're talking about how important the content is. It's always, you're all, you're confident in your content. If you're confident in your content, that humor is going to come through. You're going to be comfortable being able to be yourself and being able to, to do humor. So like, I, I love the fact that there's too many people that are worried about the high definition stuff and, and the, you know, the gizmos and the gadgets, and they're forgetting about the most important thing, which is what you're talking about. Right. Right. So I love that. So my, my um, goal in the audience is I want the people there to say, I get it. I agree with it. I think I can do it. I'm willing to try it. Mm. If I do that with the concepts that I have, then I know I'm going to create action once that audience is finished. And the only way you can do that is just being conversational about it and being real. You know, I'm relaxed because I'm prepared. People say, well, I get nervous before I give a speech. Right, because you're fucking unprepared. (laughs) <laughs> that's the only reason people get nervous yeah so there's nothing somebody could throw at you that you haven't right. seen a thousand times right. and you're and you're ready for it. and you enjoy it see you stayed on the but forefront I, I got that in new york city people don't live in new york city people don't understand the value of having doors slammed in your face in new york city and and i mean literally the rudest people on the planet live there yeah and they're nice and rude them. Huh? Nice. They're nice yeah, yeah, and rude. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the same. So I'm this is this actually I was I was you were having some sort of class that I was at. It was in Charlotte and I was walking past your desk and you were talking to somebody else and uh, you, you were in conversation with them. And I just haphazardly said, uh, what's that? You know what is resp- Chris Stone? You know what his response to me was? He goes, what the F do you care? What, I what's was just going to say there's probably an F-bomb in there. right? Just like that. And I th- yeah, looked yeah. at him. I said. I said, you're right. It's none of my business. And I walked on and then I heard him in the background talk to the other guy. And he goes, these guys from New York, you can say anything to them. They don't care. <laughs> Great. Exactly. <laughs> it's not, it's, there's, you can't be offended by language and win in this world. That's why the politically correct world is going to lose. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. You, 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 that's one thing. It's, in, it's literally impossible to offend me. I couldn't care less. Just yesterday, somebody kicked me out of their office. I was wearing, instead of wearing a, a muzzle, I was wearing like a, like a welder's thing, you know, like a little face mask or whatever. And so, the, but they wanted the muzzle. And I walked into, like, stand away. You yeah. know, push me out of his office. And I said, uh, he goes, that thing doesn't work. I said, yeah, you're right. Uh, I go, I'm not sick though. And he goes, oh, well, it doesn't matter. And so I walked away and, uh, and that's it. I got no. He's all angry. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I could leave. No, you can't please I'll, everybody, Dan. I was bringing him a smoothie for crying out loud. <laughs> they couldn't even handle the smoothie. So there, uh, I would be remiss if I uh, if I didn't talk about this. There's plenty of great comments that I, that we want to share here from um, you know from uh, your tribe, uh, Jeffrey, as well as uh, as well as Dan's. But uh, I would be remiss if we did not talk about the podcast. Yeah. Uh, sell or die. It's and an awesome I really, podcast. I really, oh my God. Um, so this is just, uh, this is just obviously if, if you're, uh, watching, listening to, uh, to the show, uh, grab sell or die. And if you don't have it already subscribe, um, uh, what are you doing? Um, obviously Jeffrey, uh, and his wife do a fantastic job and obviously top charting, very successful. Uh, Jeffrey, how has, um, 
how is the podcast um, in in your world in in the past year of obviously what's happening? Um, how has how have things changed uh, in in terms of the podcast? Are they you know are they going? Are you it's able to do brand, it more often a, or? No, we're doing it once a week. It's a brand. We used to do it every day, and mm-hmm. it just got ridiculous. Um, we have guests sometimes. We don't have guests sometimes. It's Jen and I. We're, we'll pick a topic and talk about it. Uh, but we're both pretty diverse people and we both have good energy and we both had smart parents. So we're both smart. And then it's a matter of picking a topic and talking about it. Like I'm going to give you an example of what we do on the podcast. It's now January the 25th or 30th, whatever the day was. And it's podcast time. So we get, we're sitting at the table. I said, you know, I said, everybody made some kind of a resolution on January the first half drunk, whatever. And they made some kind of game plan. It's now the 30th of the month. What's working? Mm. And is it now time at the end of the month to revise your game plan? 30 days into it. You're not going to the gym anymore. Remember the gym? Fat fucker. <laughs> huh? Right. And, and you, you put yourself in a position where you're, you are not – achieving what you thought you would achieve, you need to reconnoiter your plan or revise your plan. For me personally, I don't make a goal at the beginning of the year. I think about what I'm going to do, the five things I'm going to do this year, maybe more. And my birthday is February the 11th next week. And if you don't, I mean, many of you don't know it's my birthday. I am a size extra large in Ralph Lauren, if any of you (laughs) are interested. Um, But that's when I make my goals. I spend about six weeks thinking about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to achieve it. And then I spend the next, you know, 40 something weeks doing it. But you see, and that's, and that this, this is a lifelong thing. This is a lifestyle of while you're constantly creating new content and right. growing and learning and doing this. It's not, but it's very the deal. I learned this in my father's kitchen cabinet factory. Measure twice, cut once. Yes. You you know, cut the ropes. Yeah. Jordan Favor is one of the people that uh, commented over here. Jordan's a, a friend of my son's, and he helped us build the shed once. And we were all talking about that. You know, measure twice and cut once. And he goes, oh, everybody knows that's garbage. You measure twice and cut it 300 times. You just keep yeah. on. <laughs> you, you, to you measure twice and buy extra wood. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on. So, uh, we, do we have any other people? Any comments? Because I know. Oh yeah, we've got we've got some great comments. A lot of people buying the book today, uh, Jeffrey. And if oh, cool. if you're just joining yeah. us late, make sure uh, yeah, go yeah. to Amazon. You know, wherever you buy a book. Um, you know, most people buy them on Amazon, but it's also Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Um, it's not only buy the book; it's buy the book and use it. If it just becomes yeah. artwork on your bookshelf, uh, it's. It, it, you, you almost, it's often worse because every time you look at it, you feel guilty. Just, it's too easy. If, if you're not going live, it's dead. It's too easy to go live. It looks like you're lazy if you're not trying. So yeah. Yeah. We've got some great comments here. Nina Oglesby. She can't wait to leave a great review. P- our buddy Pete Primo, uh, uh, fantastic uh, uh, furniture salesman. Uh, he attended one of your live seminars in Cleveland. Don't even know what he didn't even know what LinkedIn was. Now he has over 15,000 connections. More importantly, your books, seminars and teachings have made me millions cool. over the years. Very thankful for you. Uh, have to run watch the uh, watch the replay. So shout yeah. out, uh, shout out to a ton of people here that are that are in here, and of course June Klein, uh, the wonderful, the intentional June Klein. Happy premature birthday, Jeffrey Gittimer, the King of Sales, yeah, the King of Sales. That. I've got to ask you about the King say, of Sales. Hold on, it's very ha- yeah. happy immature birthday. Yeah, I would rather be immature. <laughs> immature. Like, you see, <laughs> look for the funny. Look for right. the funny. It's it, right. it's right there. So um, what are you doing now? Do you have, I know you're going live every day, but do you have any upsell? Do you have any membership sites or anything that's yeah, going yeah. on? Yeah, um, you can go to Gittimer.com slash Insiders Club, where I've, I've put all my content together. And we have a Facebook group. And I do two coaching things a month, a, a, a master class by somebody else and a, a coaching thing. And it's we had hundreds of members already. 
Yeah, hundreds of Mar and everybody sticking around because they're constantly uh, receiving value. It's 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 more yeah. than motivation. It's actual skill. How uh, you know, when people call you a motivational speaker? I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 true value. You in the first five right. minutes of one of your talks, you get more than most seminars all around. Thank you. I'm inspirational, and I'm informational. If somebody asks me what 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 kind of talk do you give, I, it's inspirational and it's informational. Because if I'm motivated, it's for a day or two. But if I'm inspired, you can remember your high school coach or teacher that and college professor that inspired the crap out of you and you still think about him or her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and, and you obviously you've gained a lot from your dad and your, uh, and, oh, yeah. and his season. he was, he was self-employed. Yeah. He manufactured kitchen cabinets and countertops and then later on did mergers and acquisitions. But, um, you know, you, you remember the things about your dad that are, uh, that marked you. And um, my dad was discussing me and my, my, I had a partner that we did consulting with early on in the, in the seventies. Um, and my dad was like giving a testimonial for me to go work with this company. He goes, you're going to like these boys. They piss ice water. I mean, <laughs> well, what better metaphor can you use than that? <laughs> um, but we're driving to school one day. He's driving me to high school, raining. Somebody does something on the road, Jersey. Yeah. And my father's like giving him shit. I go, Dad, what are you doing? He says, I don't get ulcers, son. I give them. <laughs> cool. My my dad used to when he would get angry he, he he would never curse for some reason he, that, that wasn't his thing but he'd he'd make up a name for him like in Yiddish and so everybody had a Yiddish name so when he got really mad at somebody I don't even know what it means but when he really mad at him, he would look at this Yukel Meyer Oisen Schaffer I don't like yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> exactly a Yukel Meyer Oisen <laughs> I have no. Um, if anybody, for all you uh, heaps out there who understand Yiddish, go ahead and tell me what that is. I have because you can't even. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, man, I really, I really appreciate this. This, um, this latest book is probably, uh, you know, the Little Red Book of Sales is the number one selling sales book on the planet. Uh, everybody needs to have one. I really believe this is your most important piece of work to date. Yeah, it's because it's so timely, Dan. Yes, it, it, it's, it's like, and, and the fact that what I said before, it's so easy to go live now. It's, it's oh, so yeah. easy to communicate with so many people live now. If you oh, yeah. don't do it, uh, you don't look as good as if you would if you did. You're going to lose to someone who does. Yes. Wow, there it is. I think that's, that's the statement. If you don't do it, you're going to lose to someone who does, which is going to be me, which is me now because we're doing live stuff. So listen, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer, any parting comments, any other things that you could share with? Uh, uh, stay out of New Jersey. I don't, eat, I don't. Eat well, you know, we're in the south. We're, Dan, we're in the South now. I it's know. nice here. People are friendly yeah. here. I've and yet to, I've yet to have a bad day. I, when I people, said when people wave at you in Charlotte, they use all their fingers. And that's probably the, that's probably the best thing you can say about living in the South. That, I'm, I, I apologize. I'm stealing that one. Love Go it. Okay. Listen, Jeffrey Gidmer, you're the best. Uh, for all you guys watching this, this, is, this type of stuff, uh, Jeffrey Gidmer, go to his go to his. Uh, website uh, check out the free stuff that he's doing join the membership site and be one of the people that take action instead of yeah. the people on the sidelines thank you go. for posting that up there yeah i appreciate it very much go get them, guys. yeah all right man. dudes thank you so much thank you so much i totally appreciate it thanks Chris. jeffrey dan you want to send us out 
Oh, I got to make something up right now. Listen, guys, uh, th the thing about live is you're doing it right now. You're already living your life. You might as well do it so other people could see you and you can impart your wisdom and knowledge. You're the best. I'm the Deej. Go get them today.